When you start creating content more often, you face the situation when you have so many raw files with amazing photos and b-roll videos that suddenly you realize that you are actually running out of space. So you have two options – buy more space or try to organize your files a little bit differently. I'm not sure about you, but I prefer the second option. And that's exactly what I'll be talking about in today's video. Around 11 years ago, when I started to take more pictures and shoot more videos, as a storage place I only used CDs and the hard drive of my laptop. But by the way, it's still alive, I use it to watch movies or YouTube sometimes. So my vacation JPEG files and my videos shot on point-and-shoot camera did not take much space or I was just simply deleting them because of the low quality and value. Over time, after purchasing the first DSLR camera and starting to gather more valuable and heavier photo and video materials, my computer hard drive became full and I had to look for another way to store my data. At that point in time, I was not even thinking about any backup, I was just literally looking for additional space to store my files. So I purchased an external hard drive for 1TB and ripped there my entire disk with photos and videos. Yeah, these were times where 1TB was more than enough. And at the same time, I find out about the service from Yahoo called Flickr, where they were offering free 1TB space for your photos and videos, so I decided additionally to upload all my photos and videos also there. And this was the key moment for me to understand the importance of backing up my files, because right after I uploaded everything to Flickr, my external hard drive died. A huge downside of Flickr was the fact that it wasn't a real cloud, so you couldn't upload all types of files there, but only a couple of photo and video formats. So all the raw files I had on my external drive, they just stopped existing. But to be honest, I never needed them after this happened. I didn't even try to recover them. Anyway, despite that, I decided to think of a better solution for storing and backing up my data. And that wasn't about having as many copies as possible of everything in multiple places. Well, even though that's actually the point in backing up the data. But I decided to gather only essential files and only the portions of the data that I really needed or may need in the future. And that required for me a creation of an efficient storage saving system. Them. At the same time, in 2018, Flickr informed about a limit of only 1000 photos in its free version, so I migrated to Google Photos. Then in 2020, Google Photos announced that from 2021 they will also stop offering free space for photos and videos. Well, let's be honest, as more and more users create more and more content, the free year comes to its end. And that was another push for me to create an efficient system even faster. And I think I got to the point when I don't really need much space, and at the same time I have a minimum budget backup system needed for my files. So let's get into my flow for photos and then for videos to give you the idea how it works for me. When I come from vacation and have a couple of thousand photos, that's really tiring to go through all of them and select the best ones. However, I think it's worth it to spend a couple of hours doing this job in order to save space on your drive. Moreover, with time I learned to take photos in a more smart way, you know, to not shoot everything I see, but to think about composition, about lighting, or if particular situation is worth memorizing at all. Because I bet most of you just have this feeling that if you don't take 100 pictures of this flower in the meadow, you'll regret later. No, just think about what result you want to achieve and then take a photo. This will not only save your time you'll spend later looking for the best shot, but also your hard drive space. Alright, so I have only the best raw files I've just selected from my vacation, what next? Well, next I usually make some tweaks in Lightroom and save the files in JPEG format. Afterwards, I send these JPEG files to the Google Photo Cloud. By the way, from 1st of June 2021, all new photos and videos that you'll upload will count toward the free 15GB storage, so hurry up to upload your photo library while there is no limit yet. On the other hand, I understand Google. There are more than 4 trillion photos and videos right now, and they can't maintain constantly growing storage for free, so I will definitely switch to their paid service when I run out of my free space, as they offer pretty affordable pricing. Moreover, there is a lot of competition, with a comparable price range. And what about my private videos? I must still upload them to YouTube, so… Ok, where else I store my JPEG files? Well, nowhere. I delete them from my computer right after uploading them to the cloud. Why? Because I still have my RAW files, which I can always export as JPEGs, so my next step will be copying my RAW files to the external drive to have two copies of them on my computer 
and on the external drive. Or if you don't want to clutter your computer, on two external hard drives. The way I do it, I simply create a folder with a year and then give each project the name with the date when it was captured. With such an approach, you wouldn't really need much space, keeping in mind the fact that most probably in 99% of cases, even if you had an important client's work or beautiful vacation photos, you will not come back for raw files if you want to share these photos with someone or post on social media. You'll just open the gallery in Google Photos or some other cloud and get it from there. At least that's how it works for me. What about videos? Obviously, they take much more space and here I also have a special system for that. Regardless whether it's a client job or a YouTube video, right after the project is done, I open my Premiere Pro project, simply navigate to Edit, Remove Unused, and after I hit the Remove and Use button, any clips or elements not used in my timeline will disappear from the Project tab. Then I just open my Project folder and remove the files that are not listed in the Project tab I have on the left side. In my case, sometimes it helps me to get rid of even 75% of video and other files that I haven't used and will never use again. Without doing that, all of them will sit in my Project folder without a reason. Apart from that, if I know that I won't need this video in the near future, I also remove the rendered version, as I can always render it again, right? So my result video lives on YouTube or if it was a client's work somewhere on the client's drive. The source files I leave on my computer and another copy I send to the external drive. The only reason I still keep some project files in my computer is because in many of my latest videos I used the materials from my old project, so that was just much more handy. Additionally, I keep in my computer several B-roll libraries that I often use and which I shot myself or downloaded from different services. For the rest of the videos, I just use these three external hard drives, one terabyte, one terabyte, two terabytes. All my life, all my projects, photos, client work, everything fits these three small external hard drives. If I wouldn't care about the storage and I would have a habit to gather everything, regardless if I'd need it in the future or not, I would just simply buy a NAS hard drive and have my own cloud at home, which is a pretty affordable solution nowadays. And um, not this cloud. But let's be honest, if you are a small video content creator like me and you just don't need to have these super modern solutions just because everyone is trying to have them, you may actually start with organizing your stuff and see if you really need so much storage for your projects. Guys, if you agree with what you've heard today, or even if you don't, like this video or leave a comment, I'll be happy to hear from you how you organize your files and back them up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet, maybe watch the next video that YouTube thinks you may like… or not. Well, with that said, love you guys, see you in the next one, cheers!